Adding and subtracting fractions. This is a procedure that most students should have encountered in grade six or seven in elementary school. Uh, but we're going to review that because often it's a skill that most students or many students are a little rusty in. They had high school, they haven't used it for a while, so let's just go over this quickly. Uh, fractions with the same denominator. When adding or subtracting fractions with the same denominator, simply add or subtract the numerators and put the solution over the same denominator. So denominators are the bottom numbers, numerators are the top numbers. When we do this first example here, what we're going to do is we're going to add the numerators, the top numbers, and we'll just put them over top of the same denominator that the, the uh, question started with, since they're both the same. And of course 3 plus 2 is 5, and 8 and there's our answer, 5 eighths for the first question. 3 eighths plus 2 eighths is 5 eighths. I think that makes sense. The next one, we're just going to subtract. It's the same idea, that, except for this time, we subtract the numerators, put them over that common denominator. 11 minus 5 is 6. So 6 twelfths is our answer. And we're finished, except for one thing. We need to make sure that it is reduced. So let's just see what could divide in the top and bottom evenly. What's the largest thing? Well, the largest number is 6. 6 goes to both those evenly. Divide both by 6, uh, and then we get the equivalent fraction of a reduced, reduced fraction of 1 half, which is equivalent to 6 twelfths. So there's our final answer, 1 half. Which brings us now to fractions that do not have common denominators. They have different denominators. Well, when adding fractions with different denominators, we must change the fraction, multiply them uh, top and bottom by the same number so that their denominators are the same, uh, both fractions are the same, and then add or subtract them just like we did in part A here. The best to use for the common denominator should be the lowest number that both the original denominators divide into evenly. In other words, the lowest common multiple of the two denominators, or in case there's three fractions, could be three denominators. And there's a couple of notes here. When adding or subtracting mixed numbers, always change them to improper fractions. We'll do that, see that in a few, a few minutes here, a couple minutes. An example there. And then also, not, no, do not change the fractions to decimals and then try to add or subtract them. Many, many times I've seen students with a fraction question, they don't like using fractions, so they change them to decimals. Well, sometimes it works, but oftentimes it does not. Because when they change to decimals, they have to round off the decimal in order to do the, uh, the math and do the add and subtracting. So let's uh, leave it as a fraction and we need to find a common denominator. So this first one we ask what's the, we've got three and we've got four here. And we ask ourselves what is the smallest number that both three and four divide into evenly? What I usually do is I take the bigger number and I uh, see if three, the smaller one goes into it. Three, does it go into four evenly? No it doesn't. So I take the, the, bigger, the bigger denominator and I double it. In this case say four times two is eight. Does 3 go into 8 evenly? Check this. No, it doesn't. The remainder again. So I triple it. 3 times 4 is 12. Yes, both will go into 12 because 3 times 4 is 12. So change them to 12s. Put it down like that. Okay, so uh, how do I change the 3 to a 12? Uh, well, I had to multiply that 3 by 4, didn't I? So I'm going to multiply the top of the, this fraction by the same number. 4 times 1 is 4. Same thing with the other fraction. 4 times what is 12? In this case, I've multiplied this side by 3, this fraction. Top get multiplied by the same number. 3 times 1 is 3. And now I just subtract, and I get 4 minus 3 over 12. So 4 minus 3 is 1, and 1 twelfth is reduced as far as it will go. That's my final answer. Uh, let's do the next question here. Uh, again, uh, 8 and 6 eight are not the same number. Does 6 go into 8? No, it doesn't. Double the 8. Does 6 go into uh, 16? No, it doesn't. Not evenly. And so I triple the 8. 3 times 8 is 24. Does 6 go into 24? Yes, it does. So 24 is our common denominator. I'm going to write that down. How did I get change 8 to 24? Well, I multiply the 8 by what? By 3. Do the same thing by the top. 3 times 5 is 15. Do the same thing with a 6. What times 6 gives me 24? I multiply this by 4. 
4 times 6 is 24, and so therefore 4 times 3 is 12. And now I can add them together. 15 plus 12 all over 24. So that gives us what? That gives us 15 plus 12 is 27 over 24. And, uh, well, I can just take and mix that into a uh, uh, mixed number. 24 goes into 27 one time. One. And there's three left over. So three 24s. But I can reduce three 24s. Three goes into three. Three goes into 24. So uh, I get three goes into three one time. Three goes into 24 eight times. And my answer then ends up being one and one eighth. It's reduced. Completely finished here. Okay. There's some more examples here. We'll quickly go through these examples uh, just to see if we can work out any bugs. First one here that's pretty simple. 8 minus 2 is just 6 over top of 9. I can reduce this by dividing top and bottom by 3. It goes into both those numbers. So I end up getting the answer of 2 thirds. 2 thirds. Okay. So uh, next one. Well, we need to change this to an... Uh, Improper fraction, 6 times 1 is 6, plus 5 is going to be 11 over 6, over the same denominator, plus 2 ninths. Change it to a common denominator, uh, 9, 6 times 9, so double the 9, get 18. Yes, 18 works. There we go. 3 times 6, therefore 3 times 11. Uh, see, 2 times 9 is 18, so 2 times the top is going to give me 4, which gives me 37 over 18, which I'll divide 18 into 37, it goes 2 times and with 1 left over, and there's my answer, 2 and 1 18th. Did that quickly, but I think that makes sense, we don't have to spend too much time on that question. Going to the last couple of questions here. Um, First one, number three. Uh, change that to improper fraction. Multiply that. Add the one. Gives me seven thirds. Minus. Multiply this. Six times one plus five is eleven over six. Well, three. Let's just try to see if the small one goes into the big one. Yes, it does. Three does go into six, two times. So we're going to change this by multiplying by two. I get 14 over 6 minus 11 over 6 equals, say, 14 minus 11 is 3 over 6, which reduces to 1 half. Divide bottom and bottom by 3, and there's my answer. Lastly, we've got a problem here, and we need to change to get common denominators. Um, and the common denominator in this case should be, well, 8 doesn't go into 12, but double the 12, 24. 20, both go into 24. 24. Now, look at the signs for a second. First one is negative, so I'll put a negative in front here. The second one has two negative signs. So we do know when there's two signs together. We learned from before that two signs the same gives us a plus. I'm going to replace the two negatives with just one plus sign. Okay, so let's go ahead and do the numbers now. What times 8 is 24? Well, 3, which gives us 15 24 2 times 12, so 2 times the top of that, it's going to be 10. And so what I have here, I have negative 15 plus 10, and it's going to be over the common denominator of 24. Well, negative 15 plus 10 is negative 5. There are different signs. You subtract the 2. 15 minus 10 is 5, and the bigger number is negative, so it's negative 5. And over the common denominator of 24, final answer quick review of adding and subtracting fractions and mixed numbers.